If you're glad to be in the number one more time, can you join me on your feet and give God praise in the sanctuary? Come on, I said, if you're glad to be in the number one more time, would you give God praise tonight? Come on, we can do better than that. If you know you got something to give God praise for, come on, come on. If you got something to praise God for, would you do it now? Come on, he woke you up this morning and started you on your way. If you got a reason to give God praise, come on, do it now, do it now, do it now. Do it now. We're celebrating tonight. Come on. Come on, if you know if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side, you don't know where you would be. Come on, if you got a reason to give God praise tonight. Come on, I give you a few seconds just to tell God thank you. Just to tell God you love him. Just to tell God he's worthy. Just to tell God he's the only God. Come on, tell him thank you tonight. Come on, tell him thank you tonight. Come on, tell him thank you tonight. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you honor. Lord, you're worthy of all the praise from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Our God is worthy to be praised. Come on, if you love God tonight, come on, just lift your hands and say, Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we've come into this house to give you praise. Hallelujah. Come on, God, we thank you and how we love you. God, you're worthy of all the praise. You're worthy of all the honor. You're worthy of all the glory. Lord God, we've gathered into this house to celebrate man, but anytime we come into this house is really to celebrate you. So Lord God, we give you thanks for the man. We, we give you thanks for the family. And Lord God, we pray. We pray, Lord God, that you have your way in this place. We pray that you move how you want to move and say what you want to say, Lord God. Have your way in the sanctuary tonight. Lord God, we pray that you open up our hearts, our minds, and our ears to receive whatever you have for us tonight. Have your way in this place tonight. Anoint the musicians and the singers and the preacher afresh that they may minister and push us into your presence. Have your way in this place tonight. And Lord God, when you do this, we'll be ever so careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. If you love the Lord, give him praise in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just stay on our feet, amen, as we, we give God some praise, amen. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise him. I love to praise.
come on. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, I love to praise him. I love to praise him. Hallelujah. Uh, we want to um, pause just for a moment um, to honor um, you all. And um, But before we do that, can we stand to our feet and honor our pastor, our first lady, Pastor Nathan E. Austin and First Lady Kim. Come on, can we give God praise for them? Come on, can we give God praise for them? Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we want to um, officially welcome you, uh, the new Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for coming to celebrate 13 years of pastor and people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Give yourselves a hand. Zion, can we give God praise for Shiloh coming all the way down from 95th Street in Miami, Florida to come and celebrate with us? I know that was not a short drive, um, but we certainly are grateful um, that you made that drive. And I know that Pastor Olson is grateful um, that his home church has come to celebrate him on tonight. Um, as many of you know, and uh, maybe you don't know, but um, it's been a difficult week um, for our pastor and for um, his family um, as um, he's been having to deal with the loss of his mother. Miss Ruby Fryer went on to be with the Lord, um, but pastor wanted to make sure that we still gathered and that we still praised God even in the midst of bereavement and the midst of sadness. And how fitting is it that it's not just his home church, but her current church that has come to celebrate and kick this thing off tonight. So we certainly thank God for that. Um, I called the team earlier today and I'm typically not very last minute, but a thought came into my mind and they made it happen because we realized, I realized that um, if Miss Ruby was here tonight in the flesh, I knew exactly where she would be sitting because it's the spot she always sat in when she came to Zion. And we wanted to make sure that that seat right behind Pastor Austin stayed empty tonight um, because that's where Mama would have been sitting tonight. 
And we wanted to drape it with our favorite colors just to show him that although not in the flesh, mom is still here. So listen, although there's heartache and tears and there's pain, we are here to celebrate tonight because that's what she would have wanted. We're here to celebrate an awesome man of God, an awesome woman of God, an awesome family of God. So New Shiloh, welcome, 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 and thank God for being here with us tonight. God bless you.
but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Put those hands together. Come on. Come on, y'all ought to testify with your praise. If the Lord brought you out of it and said, You ought to be a witness with your praise.
Baptist Church of Miami, Florida. A native of Coconut Grove, Pastor Jackson accepted the call of God to proclaim the gospel as a fourth generational pastor under the leadership of his father, Reverend Alfonso Jackson Sr. He served as a youth and assistant to the pastor at the Second Baptist Church in Richmond Heights, Florida. In 2014, Pastor Jackson was called to be the senior pastor of the Greater New Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church in Miami for close to eight years. While there, the church experienced significant growth through a strong commitment to spreading the love of Jesus Christ through leadership, outreach, values, and excellence throughout the community. Following the leading of God in 2022, Pastor Jackson accepted the opportunity to receive the Reverend Dr. D.L. Powell as senior pastor teacher of the new Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church where his grandfather, the late Dr. Arthur Jackson Jr., pastored for over 30 years. Pastor Jackson is a noted community leader. He currently serves as the president of the Baptist Ministers Council of the Greater Miami and vicinity. He also serves as the president of the Young Pastors and Ministers Auxiliary of the Florida General Baptist Convention, vice chair of the Collective Empowerment Group of South Florida, and he also sits on several organizational boards such as the Miami Children's Initiative and One Church, One Child of Florida. Pastor Jackson's greatest honor is being favorably married to the beautiful Jamila Jackson, Dean of Campus Ministries at Florida Memorial University. Together they are blessed to have two beautiful daughters, Angelina and Anderson, and a handsome son, Alfonso Jackson III. As a family, their mission is to cultivate a culture of people who authentically love their Creator and His creations through Jesus Christ. over our life. God, for we know, God, that you have favored us. When we look over our life and we look back how far you brought us, we know that it was your grace and your favor. Say love. Love is patient, caring. When it's genuine, but I have, I had my share of love abuse, manipulated, and its strength misused, and I can't help but give you glory. Try, but they 
couldn't triumph over me. Oh yes, they did try. But could it? Come on, somebody ought to worship God right there. Because they don't want you to be blessed. They didn't want you to be here tonight. But God say, not so. Not so. I have called them for this season. Come on, say it again. Say, love is patient. Love is patient. Caring and love, love is, kind. is kind. Love is felt most. Love is felt most when it's genuine. Us. You called us 
He favored me. Somebody ought to just say, He favored me. of the favor of God. God, we are, we're so thankful today that your favor looked beyond our faults. And your favor reached us in the place of our need. And Lord, so now, God, as it's preaching time, I pray that you allow the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, and the Pray, Lord, they will be acceptable in thine sight. Lord, you are our strength and redeemer. Get a glory like only you can. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say amen and amen. Can we thank God for being here today? Amen. Thank God. And then before you take your seats, can we thank God for the angel of this house, Reverend Nathan E. Austin. Hey, come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on, let's thank God. And when, what we're not going to do is that we're not going to thank God for the pastor of this house without thanking God for the bishop of the house. Thank God for Lady Kim Austin. Amen. Thank God for her. You may be seated very presence of the Lord. It is indeed a privilege, an honor, and a pleasure to be in this place, in this house, at the Zion Church of Pompano, Florida. And I'm so thankful for how the Lord has blessed this church in such an amazing way to have such a great under-shepherd and that of Pastor Austin. Amen. I am, uh, Pastor Austin is one of God's uh, favorite preachers. And, um, and just, I mean, just seems like he's just so gifted. I'm not sure what exactly he cannot do. Amen. Just, just seems like he can do it all. I, 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 I needed to change my tire. I almost called him because I knew he knew how to do it. I knew he knew how to do it. I, yeah, I, I needed to get a new carburetor. I said, let me call Nate. I bet you he knows how to put a, I don't even know what a carburetor looks like, but I, know, I bet you he does. Amen. But he is just such a gift to the body of Christ. Him and he and his, and his wife and, and their boys that are growing up so rapidly. Man. Um, I'm telling you, 
I know, I know one is in college and the other one is in high school by now. I know. Uh, but I'm so thankful to, to, to see them and how God has blessed them. And uh, so thankful to have some of the, the place of peace in the house today. Some of the people of peace. Shallow, you in the house? Shallow, wave your hands, shallow. All right. All right. We deep up in here. Amen. So glad, Shallow. Now, now they, they, don't, they only show up like this for Nate Austin. It, it's, just, it's just for you, man, just because we love you so much. But I'm so thankful for our deacons and our deaconess, thankful for our ministers that are here in the house today, and uh, thank God for the ministers of New Shallow and also Zion Church and guest churches. Uh, we are so thankful that you, you're here. Our music ministry has blessed us in an incredible way. Amen. They, they were singing so hard, they messed up the microphones. Amen, y'all. So if, if anything broke, just give the bill to Roger McPhee. Amen. Just give it to him. Uh, and, uh, and then as well, thank God for our ushers. That are, I mean, we got some of the best ushers in the world. And uh, thankful for the ushers today. This is the mass ushers, I believe. It's mass ushers. All right, mass ushers, and so thank God for, for you all today. Let me get right into my assignment um, tonight. Let me get right into my assignment tonight, and uh, let me just go ahead and just hit it, and then let me uh, uh, bless our, our pastor, and then we'll uh, have a seat. Thank God so much for Reverend Brandon McCord, and uh, thank, God for, thank God for you. Matthew Harris in the house. Amen. Thank God. Uh, you talk about shallow. Amen. That, that's Matthew Harris. Thank God for him. Amen. Good to have my sister in the house, Teresa Lee. Amen. Good to see you, Reverend Doctor. Amen. Good to see you. Turn with me to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah. And I also want to give my give greetings from um, Pastor D.L. Powell who called me today and, uh, and gives his greetings and, and well wishes as well. Jeremiah chapter 20. And I want to, I want to read from the New King James Version starting in verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 7. This has got to be probably maybe the second or third time I've ever preached in front of an LED wall. This is nice. This is nice. Hey, man. I got, Shallow, we got to get one of these. This is nice. Hey, man. You sell it to me? All right. He said you're going to sell it to me. Hey, man. And he a Christian, so you know he's going to sell it for cheap, right? <laughs> Amen. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 7. Thank God for our musicians that have blessed us tonight. Listen to what the Bible says, New King James Version. He says this. Jeremiah is speaking, and he says, O Lord, you induced me, and, and I was persuaded. You are stronger than I and have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. For when I spoke and I cried out, I shouted violence and plunder because the word of the Lord was made to me a reproach and a derision daily. Then I said, you know what? I, 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 I would not make mention of him anymore nor speak anymore in his name but his word was, was, was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back and I could not. 
for I, I, I heard many mocking. They, they said fear only, they said fear on every side. Report, they say, and, and, and we, will, we will report it. All of my acquaintances re watched for my stumbling, saying perhaps he can be induced. Then we will prevail against him and we will take our revenge on him. Look at verse 11. The Bible says, but the Lord was with me as a mighty, awesome one. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and will not prevail, and he will be greatly ashamed, for they will not prosper. Their everlasting confusion will never be forgotten. But, O oh Lord, our host, he says, you, you have test, you, you who test the righteous and see the hand, and the mind, and the heart. He says, let, it, let me see your vengeance on them. For I have pleaded my, my cause before you. Last verse, verse 13 says, Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the poor from the hand of evildoers. For a moment with your prayers and God's power, I want to preach on this subject, prospering through the pain. You may be seated in the very presence of the Lord today, prospering through, through the pain. And I solicit your, your prayers. Brothers and sisters, I don't know if you know this or not, but life is full of <laughs> pain. You don't have to go looking for it. It comes without warning. It does it. It never schedules itself. It's kind of like that cousin that you don't like. They just show up. And oftentimes when pain shows up, pain very rarely leaves when you ask it to. Because pain has a way of invading and interrupting every area of our lives. It's a rough experience to go through pain, especially when the pain doesn't come from the devil and doesn't even come from your decisions. What happens when pain comes from the divine? How do you deal with this, brothers and sisters? How do you really wrestle with this when God is the source of your struggle? How do you, yourself, how do you wrestle with this in your mind? How do you come to terms with this when you are going through life's struggles and life's issues and tears are streaming down your eyes every day? You, you, you look at Life, and you look at the devil and say, Satan, I rebuke you. And Satan said, that ain't me. You look for some obvious sin that maybe you have committed, and, and yet you cannot find one that traces the trail back to your tribulation. And but then when you look up, it looks as if God is seemingly caught red-handed. That God is orchestrating the events of your life and, and as you go through the somber shadows and stretch long and winded breath of the, sun, of the sunset of forgotten dreams, you look at your life and you say, God, what in the world are you doing? It is tough, and I can tell, though, by the, your muted amens that most of you in the house today ain't never had no trouble. I, I, I can tell. I can tell. It's written all over your face. You ain't got to say a word. 
that, that for most of us in here today, that you all have never had any tears that you've had to shed or never had any sickness that you've had to endure, never lost any loved ones, never asked the question why, never wondered if God had forsaken you, never in your mind have you ever doubted whether God's hand was with you. I know for a fact that obviously you all have always had money in your pocket, always had a good nice roof over your head always had the latest car model to ride in always had people that loved you and cared for you never lied to you never turned their backs on you but that's not my testimony my testimony is that I've gone through some hardships. I've gone through some pain. I've been ostracized. I've been villainized. I've been victimized. I've been scandalized. I've been traumatized. But in the midst of all of it, here is the reason why I shout, I'm still here. I feel like preaching. I want to know if you feel like saying amen. I'm talking to at least, not, not everybody, because again, most of y'all ain't never gone through nothing, but I'm looking for at least about seven folk in the house, and I'll make eight that'll say, Pastor Jackson, life ain't always been a crystal stair. Life ain't always been cookies and cream. Life ain't always been easy, but through it all, I, in the midst of all that I've been through, I still here. I'm still able to come up in here and give them glory. I'm still here to be able to raise my hand in victory. I'm still here because the cancer couldn't kill me. My enemies couldn't eliminate me. My struggles sure couldn't sabotage me. My suffering couldn't suffocate me. God has kept me here and while I'm here, I might as well give him praise. When you have trouble. There is a tendency when we suffer to fall and forfeit our position of victory and adopt a posture of victim mentality. And that is that we often crumble under the pressure that God has given to us, thinking that where we are now is where we're always going to be. But brothers and sisters, I came all the way from the 305 to tell somebody in the 954 that, it, that here, if you want to know what the good news is, that no matter how much you endure pain in your life, God can give you the power to prosper in the midst of your pain. Can I preach you how I feel today? Can I tell us, brothers and sisters, that even in your struggle, you can still have success. Even in your grief, you can still experience growth. Even in your problems, you can still do shallow, have peace. Even in the midst of all that you're going through, when you keep your focus on not the pain, but God's purpose and God's presence, then you'll find out that all you need is God. God, and if God is all you've got, God is all you need. You've got to have a resilience. You've got to have a determination. You've got to learn how to overcome challenges and allow the challenges to transform you from adversity into your victory because God has more in store for you if you just keep turning the page that you're on. I know the chapter is rough, but thanks be to God, this is not the last chapter. God's got more in store for us if we trust him and not give up prematurely. That, that's, that's what Jeremiah teaches us. Jeremiah in this text, brothers and sisters, he is going through his share of pain. When Jeremiah is looking at, the, when Jeremiah speaks to us, this entire chapter is really unique. Yeah. Because most of the chapter, Jeremiah is complaining. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
Matter of fact, I would even suggest that most of the book, when you look at Jeremiah, and this is the same prophet that writes Lamentations, which means to cry, Jeremiah's got a whole lot of complaints because life is not the way that he expected it. And here, brothers and sisters, here's what, here's what, what Jeremiah was going through. Lest before your neighbor goes to sleep on me tonight, here's what, they, what Jeremiah has been going through. That in Jeremiah, when we look at this text in verse number 7 and 8, we see that Jeremiah, he's experiencing trouble from his foes. Jeremiah is... He's been commissioned by God to preach what God has said, and instead of receiving celebration, he receives criticism. Instead of receiving praise, he receives persecution. Matter of fact, by the time he writes this, he just got out of the stocks. People had tried to bind him because he's just saying what God has to say, isn't it amazing how sometimes your foes will attack you not for what you've done wrong to them, but just because you're doing what God told you to do? He's experiencing trouble from his foes, but not only that, but he's also experiencing tension in his flesh. Because in verse number nine, he says, I'm so sick of being treated like this. I'm not going to preach no more. He, he, he says that, that I, I'm done with this thing. God, God can find somebody else to speak for him. I, 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 I don't need it. I don't want it. He can have it. I'm out. Deuces. Holler at you. I'll meet you in the parking lot. I am done with this. But brothers and sisters, this may be jarring for some. But let me tell you this, that being, I know it may look easy, but pastoring and preaching the gospel of Christ ain't always easy. Oh, yes, uh, absolutely. It looks as if it's easy. From the pew, oftentimes people look at the pastor and say, oh, he ain't doing nothing but going up there and talking for 30 and 45 minutes. Surely there, there's nothing more to this. But there are mundane moments of ministry. For every preacher, every pastor, that when you are faithful to God, it feels at times that God can be unfaithful to you. I'm not saying that he is because we know that God is always faithful, but there are times in which it don't feel like it. There are times in which it feels like he's left you alone. Times in which it feels like he's abandoned you. Times in which it feels like he's turned his back on you. Even Jesus, while he was on the cross, stands or sits or hangs on the cross and lifts up his voice to the Father and say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? If Jesus, the Son of God, has felt forsaken, then why do you feel as if there won't be times where you may feel forsaken? He's, he's going through this tension of what the spirit is commissioning him to do and what his flesh is pulling him away from doing. There is tension in his flesh. But not only that, but there's also not just trouble with his foes or tension in his flesh, but there's also treachery among his friends. Brothers and sisters, this messed me up because him feel, I, I can understand having trouble with my foes. Because that's what enemies do. I can, I, can ha I can even understand having trouble in my flesh because I ain't always right. But to, to have treachery among my friends, y'all not talking to me, that, that, that it, it's a different kind of hurt when, when the people that you have blessed are now turning their backs on you. That, that the, the ones that you have trusted to now say, no, I, I ain't nowhere to be found. The ones that when you they needed money, you were there to help them out. Now when you call them, they act like their phone don't work. 
here they are. He says, all of my friends are waiting for me to slip. All of them are waiting for me to fall. All of them are waiting for me to drop. All of them are waiting for me to crumble. And it looks like this is a bad situation, brothers and sisters, uh, because it looks as if this is absolutely bad. And even in the rest of the chapter, Jeremiah is still complaining. But yet in the middle of his complaint, there is one turning point. This tension that then turns into triumph. Because look at what the Bible says in this text. That he's dealing with foes. He's dealing with his flesh. He's dealing with his friends. But look at what the Bible says in verse number 11. The New International Version says... But the Lord was with me. Lord, have mercy. So, so, so that, that, now, that now the question now becomes, Pastor Jackson, how can you prosper in the middle of your pain? Pastor Austin, I believe that the Lord is sharing this text with us to share with you that you can prosper in the middle of your pain. Watch this, because God's presence is faithful with me. Wait a minute. New Shallow knows this, but Zion, you don't know this. That, that in, 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 my, in my notes, I am very detailed in my sermon. Sister Taylor, you already know that I, I'm very detailed in my message. And in my message, in my notes, I said, I wrote right here, I typed it out, that when I said that his presence was faithfully with me, the church will be shouting. But I know why y'all don't know when to come in because y'all don't have the notes. So uh, y'all please forgive me. So we're going to do this one more time. The first time was, was, just, was just practice, but we're going to do this for real now. Here's the reason for why you can prosper in the middle of what you're going through. It's because, Bert, God's presence has been faithfully with you. Okay, that, that, that's, that's what I got in my notes. Now, 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 now we on track. I like this, brothers and sisters, because here in this text, Jeremiah says that I've got, I got foes that are trying to kill me. I've got my flesh that's working against me. I've got friends that have forsaken me. But in the middle of all that I've lost, I stop looking at what I've lost and I look at what I got left. And what I got left is that God is still with me. What I've got left is that God's presence has never left me. What I've got next is that in the middle of what I'm going through, though I may feel forsaken, I am not forsaken because his word says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you because God is with me. I got to move on, but is there anybody around this house? You know that that's your testimony. Your testimony is, is that had it up been up to you and been up to your enemies, you should have been gone a long time ago. You should have been crazy. You should have been cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But the reason why you're still here is because God has been with you. The reason why you're still standing is because God has been with you. The reason why they couldn't kill you is because God has been with me. He's been faithful. Look at somebody next to you and say, he's been faithfully with me. Look, look, look at this. He says, but, but the Lord, New International Version in verse 11 says, but the Lord is with me. But I love how he says this. Because when, when the text says the Lord is with me, yeah. it doesn't mean that he is, watch this, at a distance watching me. In fact, the Hebrew would, would suggest that when he says the Lord is with me, it indicates and implies that he's right up on me. Y'all not talking to me. This is why I shout, because I know some Negroes and Negroettes that tell me, Jack, I'm with you. And then when I turn around, I can't see them. Y'all not hearing me. 
I know some folk that will say, I'm with you when you're right and I'm with you when you're up, but when I get down and I can't get myself up, I look for them and they're not there. But God isn't like man. That God that God has a way of being right up on you. That, that even when you can't see him, he'll let you feel him. Even when you feel like giving up, he whispers in your ear and tell you everything's going to be all right. That God is with me. His presence. He says his presence is with me. But then only that, but he says that, here, here's the point where I shout. He says that not only is his presence with me, faithfully with me, but his power is fighting for me. Lord, have mercy. Look at what he says in verse number 10. He says in verse number 10, but the Lord is with me, yes, but look at how he's with him. He says, like a mighty warrior. He, he says, he says, verse 11, he said, the, the Lord was with me like a mighty warrior so that, so that my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. That, that, that they'll fail and, and thoroughly be disgraced and, and, and their dishonor will never be forgotten. I love this. Because, brothers and sisters, when God allows you to prosper in the middle of your pain, when God stands beside you and stands right up on you, he'll fight the battles that you can't fight for yourself. Oh, yes, he will. That God has a way of fighting battles that you didn't even know he's been fighting. There's been some people who have had plots on you, that had plans to destroy you, that looked at you and plotted your downfall, but you don't even know about it. It's because before they could even start to make it happen, God made sabotage. That God took it and said, you ain't doing that to my daughter. God said, no, you can't touch my son. God said, no, when the devil comes against you the Lord will stand up and say this one belongs to me can anybody give God the glory because we got a God that fights for us but wait a minute because the, I, 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 can, I can see I, I, it about, it's about 25 of y'all that shouted and thank God and praise God but the rest of y'all couldn't shout and thank God because you think that your enemies are only in the flesh. Lord, have mercy. You think that your enemy is only on your job. You think your enemy is only in the church house. You think that your enemy is only at home waiting on you. You think that your enemy is only in what you can see. But brothers and sisters, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And that means that you ain't got to fight the spirit of depression when God is fighting for you. You ain't got to worry about the spirit of anxiety when God is fighting for you and God is saying that I know you can't see what the enemy is doing against you but he's saying that I'm going to stand and I'm going to fight every one of your battles I got I got I got I got to leave you but but when when God fights your battles I ain't got time to go through all of this, but, but this is what God does when he fights your battles. That God ends their plots. He embarrasses your persecutors. And then he erases the proof. He, he, he says that, that, that when God fights for you, the first thing that God does is end their plots. He says that they are plotting against you, but it's going to fail. And as a result, he embarrasses your persecutors because what they tried to embarrass you on, they wind up being embarrassed themselves. In other words, the ditch they did for you, there's going to be the same ditches. Okay, that, that, y'all not talking to me. And then he says, and then he says, 
that, that he is going to erase the proof. In verse number 12, he says, The Lord Almighty, who you who, who examine the righteous and probe the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance on them. For to you I have committed my cause. Wait a minute. Remember now what his friends said about him in verse number 10. In verse number 10, they said that we can't wait for him to fall because we going to get our revenge on him and we are going to get him but when God fights for you God has a way of taking the evidence that the enemy thought he had on you and erasing the proof y'all not talking to me erasing the proof so much so that the enemy comes up empty handed and you look like you're righteous not because you always been good but because God's got a way of making even the unrighteous which is us that the make us right. Is there anybody here today that your enemies don't know all of what you've done? Your enemy don't know all of your missteps? Your enemy doesn't know all of the issues or mistakes that you made because God has a way of erasing the proof. I close with this and I moved my last movement with this. But I, I, years ago I, I, I grew up in, in a place called Coconut Grove, Florida. Coconut Grove, Miami, Florida. That, 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 that's where, that's where I, I was born and raised. Uh, on the playground is where I spent most of my days. <laughs> Chilling out, maxing, relaxing. Y'all pray for me. I, I... <laughs> my father was, was the uh, PE coach, the physical education coach at F.S. Tucker, Francis S. Tucker Elementary. And he was there for years. And so uh, I was, F.S. Tucker was not my elementary school, um, but, but, but some kind of way the Lord allowed me to, 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 have, to get sick and have stomach aches at my school. And my dad had to pick me up and I had to go to his school uh, because when your dad is the P.E. coach, that means you get to play all day. <laughs> Amen. And then I, I remember, I remember there, there, was a, there, was a, there was a boy that was there. I was in the third grade. There was a boy that was there. He was in the fifth grade. His name was Tyrone Washington. I'm looking for him right now. Tyrone Washington. I don't know if he's your cousin or anybody, but Tyrone Washington. I'm looking for him. Uh, t -t Tyrone, Tyrone did not like me at all. He didn't like me. He, didn't, he didn't, couldn't stand the ground that I walked on, and he made sure that he let me know it. And matter of fact, they called him Big Ty because I, I, I know he had to have, supposed to be in the seventh grade, but he was still in fifth grade. And <laughs> Tyrone, true story, Ty Tyrone, Tyrone said that after school, it's going to be me and you. And so me being the Jackson that I am, I said, man, what's my mama phone number? Because I'm trying to get, I'm trying to leave F.S. Tucker and go to her school where everybody loved me at her school. But watch what happened though. I, 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 I went and it was three o'clock. Bell had rung, kids are gone. And, and I'm scared because Tyrone is coming looking for me. And while I, while I was there waiting for Tyrone, I saw Tyrone on the bus leaving to go home. <laughs> and I, I looked at the bus, and me being the Jackson that I am, I said, you better run, don't you, boy, you, boy, you don't know, you don't know what you about to, I was a yellow belt in karate too, you don't know. My father looked at this and, and he laughed and he said, boy, what you talking about? I said, Tyrone was trying to fight with me and, and, and he got scared and he left. He said, boy, Tyrone ain't leaving because of you. He said, I heard what Tyrone was going to do and I went to talk to Tyrone. And I told Tyrone, if he put a hand on my son, I'm going to put my hands on him. And so Tyrone ain't scared of you, Tyrone's scared of your daddy. Come in, some of y'all don't know when to shout. 
That's somebody's whole entire testimony that the reason why your enemies have not taken you out it ain't because you've been so big and bad. It ain't because you've been so strong, but because the devil ain't scared of you, the devil is scared of your daddy. Is there anybody here that can give God the glory because my daddy is bigger, my daddy is stronger, my daddy is higher than any other. I got to Victory, he's fighting for me. But that's the last thing I gotta tell you. This last thing, I'm done. But when you can prosper in your pain, God's presence will be faithfully with you. God's power will be fighting for you. But watch this, God's praise will flow through you. If y'all don't shout over nothing else, I can't help you. But look at what he says in verse number 13. Or look what he says. He says this. He said, or verse number 14, rather. He said, 13 he said, he says, sing to the Lord. Give praise to the Lord. He rescues the life of the needy from the hands of the wicked. Uh, in other words, he's saying that, that, that I'm going to praise God. And I'm going to worship him because I know what he's going to do. Now, mind you now, Cousin Alma, he's not shouting because all of his pain is gone. Jeremiah is still in pain, but yet in the middle of his pain, Jeremiah said, I'm going to praise him anyhow. I love this, brothers and sisters, because it reminds me of a young lady, of a, a young lady that went to the doctor, and a doctor told her that she had chronic arthritis. And she said that, listen, there's nothing I can do. I can prescribe you some painkillers, but you've got chronic arthritis, and there's nothing that you can do. You're going to have to live the rest of your life with this. And matter of fact, she cried, and she said, okay, if that's what the Lord wants me to do I gotta go through it but yet every Sunday I saw her she began to every Sunday lift her hands and give him glory she would run around the church at 70 some years old and here she was giving God the glory she was the loudest one in the church and I remember one day we had an event and they asked mother to come up and speak she said listen I know that some of y'all are wondering why I shout so much and why I praise God so much and why I run around and why I jump and why I lift my hands she said it's because I've got chronic arthritis and every day I'm in pain and the doctor said that the one of the easiest ways to relieve the pain is to start moving and I said well, since I got to move I might as well move in Jesus name that since I got to move anyway, I might as well praise him because she said the more I praise him, the better I feel. And that's what I came to tell somebody that I don't know what kind of pain you're going through, but you got to learn how to praise him anyhow. Yes, you got to go through the sorrow, but praise him anyhow. Yes, you got to cry, but praise him anyhow. Yes, you've been lied on, but praise them anyhow. Yes, you may be confused, but praise them anyhow. Yes, your child is suffering, but praise them anyhow. Yes, the bills are up to here, but praise them anyhow. Because I believe that when you praise them, when praises go up, somebody said that blessing things come down have I got a witness and I'm looking for somebody oh Lord I'm looking for somebody I feel like preaching now I, 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 I'm looking
looking for somebody that don't mind tonight on a Tuesday night. Can you give the Lord your best praise? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Have I got a witness here? And I, I'm so glad tonight that the Bible says that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. The psalmist doesn't say I'll bless him in good times. He said at all times. In the good times and the bad times. In the sunshine and the rain. Because I'll just believe that God didn't bring me this far to leave me. So yeah, I gotta cry. And yes, I gotta suffer. But I just believe that if I suffer with him, I'll reign with him. Have I got a witness here? And is there anybody tonight that can give God the glory? Because he's still good in the midst of your grief. He's still good in the midst of your tears. He's still good in the midst of your sickness. He's still good in the midst of your burdens. He's still good. Have I got a witness here? And if you know that God is still good, say yeah. I can't hear nobody say yes, yes. I gotta leave you here, but somebody right now is about to give up. Somebody is about to throw in the towel. Somebody right now has been drinking tears for water. Somebody right now is about to call it quits, but do me a favor, turn to somebody and look at them in the face, look at them in the eye, and say, neighbor, y'all not talking to nobody, find you somebody, and say, neighbor, I don't know what kind of pain you're feeling, say, neighbor, I don't know what kind of trouble you're going through, but let me give you this word, that weeping, may endure help just for a night help but joy I wish somebody can lift their hands and shout joy joy comes in the morning ain't God alright say yeah 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 yes yeah Look at somebody and say, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I know it's nighttime. It's it's 8 55 in the evening but good morning because God is going to get glory after this. God's going to hear me after this. God's going to make it right after this. God's going to lift me up after this. God's going to make a way after this. God's going to answer a prayer after this. God's going to get the glory to God be the glory. trying to leave y'all alone, but hallelujah. Deek, I hate I feel like this, but hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 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 Yeah.
I'm going to praise him anyhow. I'm going to praise him anyhow. In the midst of my grief, I'm going to praise him anyhow. Thank you, Jesus. I, I got I to move, but is there anybody here that's determined to praise him in the midst of your pain? is what I do when I want to be close to you I lift my hands in praise I don't know if anybody else feels that way praise is who I am I would praise him while I can I'll bless him and win all time. Yes, Lord. And I vow to praise you. Woo! Win through the good and come on, help me sing. I'll praise where the happiest had, where the half. Come on, everybody sing. I'll praise you. Yes, I will. And all that I go through. Why? Because. Come on, church. What I do. Because I owe it all. Yeah. Owe it all. The doors of the church are open today. There may be somebody here right now that you can prosper. But in order for you to prosper, you got to have his presence. You need to know that God wants to be close to you. He wants to be right up on you. And when he's right up on you, you'll never be the same again. Today can be your day. The door of the church is open today. If you're not already standing, you can stand with us. But there's somebody right now that needs to trust them. Come on, one more time. I'm out to praise you. I'm out. Come on, somebody's getting their breakthrough. Through the good and the bad. And all that I go through, why? Because, hey, yes, what I do, because I owe it all. Now, listen, if you determine the praise, this is what I need you to do. I need somebody right now, just for five seconds, lift up your hands and just begin to worship him right now. Come on. Just begin to worship him. Just begin to praise him. Just begin to glorify him. Just, come on. I need you to press. I need you to push. I need somebody right. Push past your pain. Push past the tears. Push past the trouble. Push past the tension. Push past it. Yeah. Praise is what I, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. I do, I do. It's what I do. It's what I do. It's what I do. Come on. It's what I do. Praises. Oh, my, my, my. Oh. It's what I do. It's what I do. 
is what I do. I need somebody to sing praises. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. Tonight. Tonight. I, this is what I need. You can take your seats. Take your seats. All over the room. Take your seats. Take your seats if you can. Praise is what I do. Even when I'm going through, it's what I do. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, we're, we're, about, we're about to bless this great man of God. This is what, this is what we're going to do. Granted, this, this year is year 13. Today, this is what I need. I, I need, I need for, I, I'm, I'm giving a seed of $113 tonight. I need, I need, I need four people to, to follow me with $113. I need four, two, now, now listen, let me tell you about me. Because somebody just got out the spirit just then, just that fast. Listen, I ain't, I ain't got no prophets, no prophecies to tell you. I, ain't gonna, I can't tell you that if you, if you sow a seed of $113, then all your bills are going to be paid. I can't tell you that. There's some people, maybe God speaks to them that way. God, God doesn't speak to me that way. But what I do know is that God speaks to me in the word of God. And the word of God says when you bless the man of God, that he'll turn around and bless you too. That God will bless you back. And so there's somebody here today, I need you to, I need you to, to, to follow me with $113. I see one, 113 McPhee, that's two, that's three. Thank you. Four, five, good. All right. Now we on six. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, the rest of you, this is what I need. I need you all to help me. Now, you can't be mad at me because if you don't have it, then you safe. Amen. You ain't got to look at me funny. Amen. Some of y'all are not going to see me no more this year. Now, the new shallow, y'all, I'll see y'all next week. Amen. But, but listen, I need you all to, to follow me, and I need you to give $31. Those that can and will, give me $31, and I need you to, I need you to do that. Now, some say, Pastor Jackson, I don't have $31. Okay, that's fine. Give 30 Amen. Give 30 But I, I need you to get as close to it as you can. I need you to get as close to it as you can. Now, those that are giving $113, I still need you to do that. I got six that are giving $113, and I'm number seven. And amen. We any, any other ones that, that want to do that, you can let, we can do that. But let's let's do that. Now, Cash App, that, that's a Cash App on the screen. All right. It's dollar sign N E A Ministry. N dollar sign N as in Nathan, E as in Eagle, A as in Austin ministry all right and then zale and paypal is nathan e austin number one a e at nathan e austin one at aol.com and then this is push pay push pay zion church push pay zion church and in the memo we're gonna we're gonna say nathan nathan austin all right or pastor austin all right and so i'm gonna make sure I, I get mines in. All right. And uh, and matter of fact, we don't have seven people. We got eight people. 
because I am giving I'm giving $113 for my wife and uh, Teresha she, th th that's your friend All right, tell her that I gave $113 for her and that she really should give her husband's money back alright so I, I need you to tell her that now we don't want to, I, want, I need you to tell her you you one of her best friends, all right? Tell tell her that 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 I gave tell tell her I gave two hundred dollars for her, all right? All right, yeah. Tell tell her I gave two hundred dollars for her, all right. So any any a Austin, all right. I want to make sure I I spell it all the way right. All right, all right. So are you ready to give? Okay. So we're gonna give, and I need us to give well. Now you can't, what we're not gonna do is that we're not gonna shout, and lift hands, talking about praise what I do, and then give the man of God a dollar. Amen, that is unspiritual, amen. No, 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 we, we're gonna bless him. Now, we, we, now if, you're only, if you only got a dollar, then that's fine, but, but, but if the Lord has blessed you, and he has been a blessing to this church, he has been a blessing to Pompano. He's been a blessing to New Shallow. Lord knows he's been a blessing to New Shallow. Amen. And so we're going to be a blessing to him. All right? We're going to be a blessing to him. And uh, and I, I just sent my $226. All right? Those that, that are giving, they uh, those that are giving $113, all right? If you're giving by like card or, or Zelle, you're about to cash. Okay, online. All right? All right? That's, that's one, two, three, four. All right? All right, five. All right, who is the six? Six. All right, all right. Got one back there, Doc. Go, go to her. Go to her. Amen. Go, go, go to her. Amen. Yeah, go to her. Before she change her mind, go to her. Go to her. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So we we've given. All right. Now, oh, I got another one. Got another one over here. All right. You gotta follow. You got okay. So Teresa, you got it. Thank you. Thank you. That, thank you. That's that's nine. All right. All right. His mother in law. That's I know that's more than $113 there. I know that. I, I know what kind of giver she is. Thanks be to God. That's why she has shallow. Amen. Not here. Amen. She can't come here for nothing in the world. She can't, she cannot come to Zion Church. She is at shallow. Amen. All right. All right. Good. 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 All right. So now for the rest of us. Let's give. I'm asking those that will give $31. Let's do that. And, uh, and those that, that, uh, that give as close to it as you can, get, get, get as best as you can. Some can do over $31. Some can do, uh, some can do $50, whatever, whatever it is. Let's give our best. Let's, at New Shallow, this is what we like to do. We like to put that gift in our right hand. Let's go ahead and let's do it. Let's put it in our right hand, whatever you got, whether it's electronically, whether uh, put your phone in your hand if it's electronic, or check, envelope, cash, whatever you have. Let's put it in our right hand because at New Shallow we believe in, what, in giving God what's right and not just what's left. All right? So we're going to give what is right and not just what we got left. All right? So let's pray. God, Father, we thank you for what we have in our hand. Bless it. Use it. Sanctify it. Use it for your kingdom. And I pray, God, that this gift would be a blessing to this man of God and this woman of God and their children of God. I pray, Lord, that you will bless them so much so that when they receive these tangible gifts, these tangible showings of our love, that they'll be encouraged, that they'll be empowered, and they'll be blessed to be a blessing to others as well. We ask these things. And those that are giving, I pray that you'll give them more back than they've sold into this man. Bless them, God. There won't be any lack. They won't even miss it because, Lord, you're going to give it back to them, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Give me your hands are ushers. All right. So y'all, y'all stand up. Amen. Everybody, everybody stand up.
on, did Pastor Jackson bless us tonight or what? Come on, did he bless us tonight or what? Wow, what a timely and powerful word, and we certainly thank God for him, and uh, we just ask God to restore unto him everything that he poured out um, to us tonight. We are um, just about ready to, um, to leave tonight, but um, there's a few very special things that we want to do before we leave. Um, a few of our ministries um, have some presentations for, um, for, for pastor, um, so they're going to come out now and very briefly um, just bless pastor from, um, from our ministries. Um, the ministries represented tonight are the Sunday school ministry, the college ministry, the hospitality ministry, the pastor's aid ministry, the couples ministry, and the senior saints ministry. Um, so we're going to receive them now um, as they come to bless our pastor. And shortly after that, uh, we'll have Pastor Jackson come back. Um, we'll have Pastor Austin come up um, first and um, give us some remarks. And then Pastor Jackson will come and, and give us our benediction. Amen. Our uh, ministries are ready. Uh, they can come out at this time um, to give their presentation. This will be from First Friends in Hospitality. We appreciate your service, and we love you. Hey, Pastor, I just want to say I've been here with you for 10 years now. I love you and First Lady. I love Zion, and I love Shiloh for coming out and supporting us. Yeah. I thank you for being the shepherd that you are. This is from the College Connection. We love you. Pastor, we love you. And on behalf of the Sunday School and the leaders of Mount Zion, also, but basically the Sunday School, you know sometimes you get a little grouchy and you be fussing. Tawana, help me out now. And you know, when he's like that, there was a commercial that I saw, and it said that he was hungry, and he needed a Snicker bar. So here's your Snicker bar. Oh, baby, all <laughs> This is for the pastor's wife, who we call the bishop. It takes a special person to be a pastor's wife, for it is not an easy task or a simple way of life. When people need a helping hand on you, they can depend, for you always try your best. infinite wisdom, the Lord surely knew that we would need a pastor like you. <laughs> as faithful as you are, a love of God's word, a heart for his flock, you give of yourself because you stand on the rock.
on, give God praise for our ministry leaders. Have seven more, seven more of our ministries will are scheduled to present on on Sunday, so we're saving a little bit uh, for the Sunday celebration. Real quickly before Pastor comes up, because this may be my last opportunity to say it tonight, um, we have some food to go for our guest. Uh, we have some food to go for our guest. You know, we don't uh, we don't like to have y'all come all this way and keep you here late and at least not send you home with a little bit of food. Um, so, so right after service, um, it, remember Zion, y'all know how we do. Our guests get served first. We make sure our guests are taken care of first, and then what's left over will be for, for Zion. But so when we when we when we give the benediction, you're just gonna go out um, to my to my right and go to our fellowship hall, um, and you'll receive your to-go container um, at that time. Amen. Listen. Um, would you do me a favor and just stand to your feet and receive our pastor as we celebrate 13 years. Come on, let's show Pastor Nathan E. Austin some love as he comes. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Um, I'm going to say this quickly. Um, that way I won't cry. Um, God always knows what you need before you need it. Um, for the Bible says he goes before us and he makes all crooked paths straight. Pastor Brandon alluded to this on Sunday. And I'll allude back to it again. It was in September. It was really laid upon my heart by God and through Pastor Brandon that I would need a break been going, 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 and we were trying to figure out when that was going to be, when it was going to look like, and I was thinking summertime when things are slow, and April was the month that God dropped in my spirit. God literally told me, you're going to need April off, and begrudgingly, that it would be a time for me to just rest and take my minds off of things. And as we were planning this celebration and pastor anniversary, I did not have, we normally don't have pre-anniversary services. Um, last time Shawa was here, we would have you come when our early service. We never really done pre-anniversary service. It was a few weeks ago. God laid on my heart that you need to have one, and specifically, Shiloh needs to come. So I talked to Pastor Jackson. I said, this is a one-person invitation only. It's, if you cannot come, we won't have it. But God told me that Shiloh needs to come on this night, not knowing this night what I was going to need the most was the Zion family and the new Shiloh family. I say this to Shiloh because I may not get to say it. I want to publicly thank you for loving my mother. I want to thank you for taking care of my mother. The reason why she would not and refused to join our church was because of the love that she had for Shiloh and the love that Shiloh had for her. She was making plans on catching that bus and parking it outside the gate so she could ride back home with us because she knew we were going to feed her after service. But what Pastor Jackson did tonight was formed before the foundations of this world. That word tonight, some people ask what I canceled. 
I said, no, mom wouldn't want me to cancel it. We didn't do this for money, do it for wealth. I did it because I needed a word from the Lord. And what Pastor Jackson did for me, I shall never, ever forget. I say this and I'm done. I was sitting in the convention center in Kissimmee, Florida. I was getting the news about perhaps my mom could not be contacted. Thousands of people in the auditorium. We're responsible for all of the sound and video and it just dropped in my spirit that perhaps mom had left. And nobody knew with me. We went through the entirety of the service. And God ordained it for two of my sons of Shiloh, Pastor Ken Johnson, and your pastor, Pastor Arthur, uh, Alfonso Jackson Jr., led my hand and prayed over me like I, as I cried like a baby. What Pastor Jackson instilled in us years ago, that we must always look out for each other. And for Pastor Jackson and Pastor Johnson and later Pastor Barbara, two and three sons of Shiloh, all the way in Kissimmee, Florida, to wrap their arms around me, to let me know that they would be there and everything would be okay. That's the reason why I'm able to stand here tonight declaring that we shall prosper in the midst of our pain. Zion, that's our word. That pastor is in pain now, but the mission is still clear. God has ordained us to be positioned to prosper, and we believe by faith that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered to the Son of Man what God has in store for me. For us, to my lovely wife, thank you. Of course, we'll say more about you. Uh, Pastor Jackson took has bo had both of my mothers, my mother, my mom, and my mother in love. Now, Jack, you got to let one of them go. We, we, we've had this conversation privately. I think I got to make a public case now. You, mom left here before she can come be with me, but honor course, Renee Davis, just a jewel of a person uh, who's already stepped up to be a mother. I thank God for you. Shiloh, thank you so much. I'm sure we'll love on each other. This is not this Saturday, but the upcoming Saturday. Um, as we say, uh, farewell to Ruby L. Fryer. Can we receive now again, Pastor Jackson? Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. He blessed this house. He blessed your pastor. Come on, you can do even better than that. Raise the volume of your praise as he comes to bid us good night. You remain standing. We're about to go home. Amen. We're leaving. Thank you again for, for having us. And Pastor Austin said it right, that uh, my grandfather was, was big on the brotherhood family aspect of New Shiloh and that uh, that's also I'm not sure if you remember man Shiloh had this thing uh, I remember as a kid um, brothers to the rescue and uh, whenever a brother a brother would, would be struggling the other pastors would come and, and stand with, with him and so what happened in Kissimmee was brothers to the rescue and uh, stood beside him we stand, stand still stood, stand beside him now but what brothers don't do, and I, I close with this, what brothers don't do is that brothers don't show pictures of you in costume in the introduction uh, of in, in the introduction video. I said, out of all the pictures, that's the one. All right, let's pray. God, thank you for what our eyes have seen, the ears have heard. Thank you, God, for what our eyes have seen. Thank you, God, Lord, for this church. 
Pastor Zion Church, and thank you for this man of God, Pastor Nathan Austin, and all that he has done in this ministry, and all that he has yet to do. And God, we pray now, God, that his latter will be greater than the former, that what is ahead of him will be greater than what is behind him. Bless him, bless his family, bless this church, this fellowship. I pray, God, that you bless the shallow church as we leave this place to go back home. Give us safe travel and grace. Bless the food that has been prepared for us. And let it be for nourishment of our bodies. And bless the hands that have prepared it and the mouths that will eat it. And God, I pray that you please give Pastor Austin strength. Give his family strength during this time of bereavement and grief. Knowing that even in the midst of pain, you will still prosper him. Because you will never leave him. Bless them now, God. And please forgive Pastor Austin for what picture that he posted on on that video. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit may it rest, rule, and abide with the Lord's people henceforth now and forevermore. And everyone that's prospering, say amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Zion, we love you. We'll see you Sunday. We'll see you Sunday. We'll speak to you.